Mercia. Mercia was one of the kingdoms of the Anglo-Saxon Heptarchy. The name is a Latinization of the Old English or comma meaning border people. Mercia dominated what would later become England. Subsequently it declined gradually before the rising power of Wessex, whose rulers eventually became kings of all England. The kingdom was centered on the valley of the River Trent and its tributaries, in the region now known as the English Midlands. The kingdom did not have a single capital as such. In times before a sizable civil service, the capital was effectively wherever the king was at any given time. Early in its existence, Repton seems to have been the location of an important royal estate. According to the Anglo Saxon Chronicle, it was from Repton that in 873 to 4 that the great heathen army deposed the king of Mercia. Slightly earlier, Alpha seems to have favored Tamworth. It was there where he was crowned and spent many a Christmas. For 300 years, having annexed or gained submissions from five of the other six kingdoms of the Heptarchy, Mercia dominated England south of the River Humber. This period is known as the Mercian Supremacy. The reign of King Alpha, who is best remembered for his tact that designated the boundary between Mercia and the Welsh kingdoms, is sometimes known as Golden Age of Mercia. Nicholas Brooks noted that the Mercians stand out as by far the most successful of the various early Anglo-Saxon peoples until the later 9th century, and some historians, such as Sir Frank Stenton, believe the unification of England south of the Humber estuary was achieved during the reign of Offa. Mercia was a pagan kingdom, King Peter converted to Christianity around 656, and Christianity was firmly established in the kingdom by the late 7th century. The Diocese of Mercia was founded in 656 with the first bishop, Diema, based at Repton. After 13 years at Repton, in 669 the fifth bishop, St. Chad, moved the bishopric to Lichfield, where it has been based since. In 691, the Diocese of Mercia became the Diocese of Lichfield. For a brief period between 787 and 799 the diocese was an archbishopric, although it was dissolved in 803. The current bishop, Michael Eitgrave, is the 99th since the diocese was established. At the end of the 9th century, following the invasions of the Vikings and their great heathen army, much of the former Mercian territory was absorbed in Tothi Dane law. At its height, the Dane law included London, all of East Anglia and most of the north of England. The final Mercian king, Kilwolf II, died in 879. The kingdom appears to have thereby lost its political independence. Initially, it was ruled by a lord or ealdorman under the overlordship of Alfred the Great, who styled himself King of the Anglo Saxons. The kingdom had a brief period of independence in the mid 10th century, and again very briefly in 1016. However, by this time, it was viewed as a province within the Kingdom of England, not an independent kingdom. Mercia is still used as a geographic designation and the name is used by a wide range of organizations, including military units, public, commercial and voluntary bodies. Mercia's exact evolution at the start of the Anglo-Saxon era remains more obscure than that of Northumbria, Kent, or even Wessex. Mercia developed an effective political structure and adopted Christianity later than the other kingdoms. Archaeological surveys show that Angles settled lands north of the River Thames by the 6th century. The name Mercia is Old English for boundary folk and the traditional interpretation is that the kingdom originated along the frontier between the native Welsh and the Anglo-Saxon invaders. However, P. Hunter Blair argued an alternative interpretation, that they emerged along the frontier between Northumbria and the inhabitants of the Trent River Valley. While its earliest boundaries will never be known, there is general agreement that the territory that was called the first of the Mercians in the tribal Hidagi covered much of South Derbyshire, Leicestershire, Nottinghamshire, Northamptonshire, Staffordshire and Northern Warwickshire. The earliest person named in any records as the King of Mercia is Creada, said to have been the great-grandson of Isle. Coming to power around 584, he built the fortress at Tamworth which became the seat of Mercia's kings. His son Pippa succeeded him in 593. Searle, a kinsman of Creada, followed Pippa in 606. In 615, Searle gave his daughter Quimberga in marriage to Edwin, King of Dara whom he had sheltered while he was an exiled prince. The Mercian kings were the only Anglo-Saxon heptarchy ruling house known to claim a direct family link with the pre-migration continental Germanic monarchy. The next Mercian king, Penta, ruled from about 626 or 633 until 655. Some of what is known about Penta comes from the hostile account of Bede, who disliked him, both as an enemy to Bede's own Northumbria and as a pagan. However, 
Speed admits that Penda freely allowed Christian missionaries from Lindisfarne into Mercia, and did not restrain them from preaching. In 633 Penda and his ally Cadwallon of Gwynedd defeated and killed Edwin, who had become not only ruler of the newly unified Northumbria, but Bretwalda, or High King, over the southern kingdoms. When another Northumbrian king, Oswald, arose and again claimed overlordship of the south, he also suffered defeat and death at the hands of Penda and his allies, in 642 at the Battle of Maserfield. In 655, after a period of confusion in Northumbria, Penda brought 30 sub-kings to fight the new Northumbrian king Oswy at the Battle of Winwood, in which Penda in turn lost the battle and his life. The battle led to a temporary collapse of mercy and power. Penda's son Peta, who had converted to Christianity at Repton in 653, succeeded his father as king of Mercia, Oswy set up Peta as an underking, but in the spring of 656 he was murdered and Oswy assumed direct control of the whole of Mercia. A Mercian revolt in 658 threw off Northumbrian domination and resulted in the appearance of another son of Penda, Wulfhair, who ruled Mercia as an independent kingdom until his death in 675. Wulfhair initially succeeded in restoring the power of Mercia, but the end of his reign saw a serious defeat by Northumbria. The next king, Athelred, defeated Northumbria in the Battle of the Trent in 679, settling once and for all the long-disputed control of the former kingdom of Lindsay. Athelred was succeeded by Coenred, son of Wulfhair. Both these kings became better known for their religious activities than anything else, but the king who succeeded them in 709, Kilred, is said in a letter of St. Boniface to have been a dissolute youth who died insane. So ended the rule of the direct descendants of Penda. At some point before the accession of Ethelbald in 716 the Mercians conquered the region around Roxeter, known to the Welsh as Pangwernor as the Paradise of Powys. Elegies written in the persona of its dispossessed rulers record the sorrow at this loss. The next important king of Mercia, Ethelbald, reigned from 716 to 757. For the first few years of his reign he had to face two strong rival kings, Whitered of Kenton and of Wessex. But when Wider died in 725, and in abdicated in 726 to become a monk in Rome, Ethelbald was free to establish Mercia's hegemony over the rest of the Anglo-Saxons south of the Humber. Ethelbald suffered a setback in 752, when the West Saxons under Cuthred defeated him, but he seems to have restored his supremacy over Wessex by 757. In July 2009, the Staffordshire hoard of Anglo-Saxon gold was discovered by Terry Herbert in a field near Lichfield in Staffordshire. Lichfield functioned as the religious center of Mercia. The artifacts have tentatively been dated by Svante Fisher and Jean Sola to around AD 600 to 800. Whether the hoard was deposited by Anglo-Saxon pagans or Christians remains unclear, as does the purpose of the deposit. After the murder of Ethelbald by one of his bodyguards in 757, a civil war broke out which concluded with the victory of Offa, a descendant of Pibba. Offa had to build anew the hegemony which his predecessor had exercised over the southern English, and he did this so successfully that became the greatest king Mercia had ever known. Not only did he win battles and dominate southern England, but also he took an active hand in administering the affairs of his kingdom, founding market towns and overseeing the first major issues of gold coins in Britain. He assumed a role in the administration of the Catholic Church in England, and even negotiated with Charlemagne as an equal. Offa is credited with the construction of Offa's dyke, which marked the border between Wales and Mercia. Offa exerted himself to ensure that his son Ikfrith of Mercia would succeed him, but after Offa's death in July 796, Ikfrith survived for only five months, and the kingdom passed to a distant relative named Cohen Wolf in December 796. In 821 Cohen Wolf's brother Kilwolf succeeded to the Mercian kingship, he demonstrated his military prowess by his attack on and destruction of the fortress of Deganwy and Gwynedd. The power of the West Saxons under Egbert grew during this period, however, and in 825 Egbert defeated the Mercian king Bjorn Wolf at Elendon. The Battle of Elendon proved decisive. Bjorn Wolf was slain while suppressing a revolt amongst the East Angles, and his successor, a former real doorman named Ludeka, met the same fate. Another eel doorman, Wilof, subsequently ruled for less than two years before Egbert of Wessex drove him out of Mercia. In 830 Wilof regained independence for Mercia, but by this time Wessex had clearly become the dominant power in England. Circa 840 Beard Wolf succeeded Wilof. In 852, Burkard came to the throne and with Ethel Wolf of Wessex subjugated North Wales. 
In 868, Danish invaders occupied Nottingham. The Danes drove Burgard from his kingdom in 874 and Kilwolf II took his place. In 877, the Danes seized the eastern part of Mercia, which became part of the Dane law. Kilwolf, the last king of Mercia, was left with the western half, and he reigned until 879. From about 883 until 911, Athelred, lord of the Mercians, ruled Mercia under the overlordship of Wessex. All coins struck in Mercia after the disappearance of Kilwolf in circa 879 were in the name of the West Saxon king. Athelred had married Athelfeld, daughter of Alfred the Great of Wessex, and she assumed power when her husband became ill at some time in the last ten years of his life. After Athelred's death in 911, Athelflaed ruled as Lady of the Mercians but Alfred's successor, Edward the Elder, took control of London and Oxford, which Alfred had placed under Athelred's control. She and her brother continued Alfred's policy of building fortified burrs, and in 917-18 they were able to conquer the southern Dane law in East Anglia and Danish Mercia. When Athelflaed died in 918, Elfwen, her daughter by Athelred, succeeded as second lady of the Mercians, but within six months Edward had deprived her of all authority in Mercia and taken her into Wessex. References to Mercia and the Mercians continue through the annals recording the reigns of Athelstan and his successors. Athelstan himself was raised in Mercia and became its king before he was king of Wessex. In Winchester, there was even an attempt to blind Athelstan as he was seen as an outsider. In 975, King Edgar is described as friend of the West Saxons and protector of the Mercians. A separate political existence from Wessex was briefly restored in 955 to 959, when Edgar became king of Mercia, and again in 1016, when the kingdom was divided between Canute and Edmund Ironside, Canute taking Mercia. The last reference to Mercia by name is in the Annal for 1017, when Edric Striona was awarded the government of Mercia by Canute. The later earls, Leofric, Elfgar, and Edwin, ruled over a territory broadly corresponding to historic Mercia, but the chronicle does not identify it by name. The Mercians as a people are last mentioned in the Annal for 1049. The dialect thrived between the 8th and 13th centuries and was referred to by John Trevisa, writing in 1387. J.R.R. Tolkien is one of many scholars who have studied and promoted the Mercian dialect of Old English, and introduced various Mercian terms into his legendarium especially in relation to the kingdom of Rahan, otherwise known as the Mark. Not only is the language of Rahan actually represented as the Mercian dialect of Old English, but a number of its kings are given the same names as monarchs who appear in the Mercian royal genealogy, for example, Free Wine, Free Alof and Aomer. The first kings of Mercia were pagans, and they resisted the encroachment of Christianity longer than other kingdoms in the Anglo-Saxon Heptarchy. Mercian rulers remained resolutely pagan until the reign of Peta in 656, although this did not prevent them joining coalitions with Christian Welsh rulers to resist Northumbria. The first appearance of Christianity in Mercia, however, had come at least 30 years earlier, following the Battle of Cirencester of 628 when Penda incorporated the formerly West Saxon territories of Hoiki into his kingdom. The conversion of Mercia to Christianity occurred in the latter part of the 7th century, and by the time of Penda's defeat and death, Mercia was largely surrounded by Christian states. Diema, an Irish monk and one of us was missionaries, was subsequently ordained a bishop, the first to operate in Mercia. Christianity finally gained a foothold in Mercia when Oswy supported Peter as sub king of the Middle Angles, requiring him to marry Oswy's daughter, Alcflid, and to accept her religion. Decisive steps to Christianize Mercia were taken by Chad, the fifth bishop to operate in Mercia. This controversial figure was given land by King Wolf Hare to build the monastery at Lichfield. Evidence suggests that the Lichfield Gospels were made in Lichfield around 730. As in other Anglo-Saxon kingdoms, the many small monasteries established by the Mercian kings allowed the political-slash-military and ecclesiastical leadership to consolidate their unity through bonds of kinship. For knowledge of the internal composition of the Kingdom of Mercia, we must rely on a document of uncertain age, known as the Tribal Hittage, an assessment of the extent of land owned, and therefore the military obligations and perhaps taxes due, by each of the Mercian tribes and subject kingdoms by name. This hittage exists in several manuscript versions, some as late as the 14th century. It lists a number of peoples, such as the Hoiki, 
who have now vanished, except for reminders in various place names. The major subdivisions of Mercia were as follows. After Mercia was annexed by Wessex in the early 10th century, the West Saxon rulers divided it into shires modeled after their own system, cutting across traditional Mercian divisions. These shires survived mostly intact until 1974, and even today still largely follow their original boundaries. The term Midlands is first recorded in 1555. It is possible, therefore, that until then Mercia had remained the preferred term, as the quote from Treviso above would indicate. John Bateman, writing in 1876 or 1883, referred to contemporary Cheshire and Staffordshire landholdings as being in Mercia. The most credible source for the idea of a contemporary Mercia is Thomas Hardy's Wessex novels. The first of these appeared in 1874 and Hardy himself considered it the origin of the conceit of a contemporary Wessex. Bram Stoker said his 1911 novel The Lair of the White Worm in a contemporary Mercia that may have been influenced by Hardy, whose secretary was a friend of Stoker's brother. Although Edwardian Mercia never had the success of Victorian Wessex, it was an idea that appealed to the higher echelons of society. In 1908 Sir Oliver Lodge, principal of Birmingham University, wrote to his counterpart at Bristol, welcoming a new university worthy of the great province of Wessex whose higher educational needs it will supply. It will be no rival, but colleague and co-worker with this university, whose province is Mercia. At this period, prior to the First World War, regional identities within England were being debated with the prospect of separate home rule parliaments being established. The British Army has made use of several regional identities in naming larger, amalgamated formations. After the Second World War, the infantry regiments off Cheshire, Staffordshire and Worcestershire were organized in the Mercian Brigade. Today, Mercy appears in the titles of two regiments, the Mercian Regiment, founded in 2007, which recruits in Cheshire, Derbyshire, Nottinghamshire, Worcestershire, and parts of Greater Manchester and the West Midlands, and the Royal Mercian and Lancastrian Yeomanry, founded in 1992 as part of the Territorial Army. The police forces of Herefordshire, Shropshire and Worcestershire were combined into the West Mercia Constabulary in 1967. Telephone directories across the Midlands include a large number of commercial and voluntary organizations using Mercia in their names. In 2012, a new football league was formed called the Mercian Regional Football League. While Sovereign Mercia is a neo pagan organization that campaigns for Mercian independence, the acting widow of Mercia advocates a return to an agrarian subsistence economy within a confederation of English regions. With more restricted boundaries than the Kingdom of Mercia at its greatest extent in the traditional area known as the Midlands, two former government office regions together cover the latter, West Midlands and East Midlands. These are also constituencies of the European Parliament and nuts one statistical regions. The West Midlands comprises the Shire counties of Staffordshire, Warwickshire and Worcestershire, the unitary counties of Herefordshire and Shropshire, the metropolitan boroughs of Birmingham, Coventry, Dudley. Sandwell, Solihull, Walsall, and Wolverhampton, and the unitary boroughs of Stoke-on-Trent and Telford and Reckon. The East Midlands comprises the Shire counties of Derbyshire, Leicestershire, Lincolnshire, Northamptonshire and Nottinghamshire, the unitary county of Rutland, and the unitary boroughs of Derby, Leicester, and Nottingham. The two regions have a combined population of 10,350,697, and an area of the Kingdom of Mercia predated the emergence of heraldry, so there is no authentic Mercian heraldic device. However, later generations have ascribed a variety of devices to the rulers of Mercia or to the land itself. The Psalter as a symbol of Mercia may have been in use since the time of King Offa. By the 13th century, the Psalter had become the attributed arms of the Kingdom of Mercia. The arms are blazoned azure, a Psalter or, meaning a gold Psalter on a blue field. The arms were subsequently used by the Abbey of St. Albans, founded by King Offa of Mercia. With the dissolution of the Abbey and the incorporation of the borough of St. Albans the device was used on the town's corporate seal and was officially recorded as the arms of the town at an heraldic visitation in 1634. The Psalter is used as both a flag and a coat of arms. As a flag, it is flown from Tamworth Castle, the ancient seat of the Mercian kings. To this day dot the flag also appears on street signs welcoming people to Tamworth, the ancient capital of Mercia.
It was also flown outside Birmingham Council House during 2009 while the Staffordshire hoard was on display in the city before being taken to the British Museum in London. The cross has been incorporated into a number of coats of arms of mercy in towns, including Tamworth, Leek, and Blaby. The silver double-headed eagle surmounted by a golden three-pronged Saxon crown has been used by several units of the British Army as a heraldic device for Mercia since 1958, including the Mercian Regiment. It is derived from the attributed arms of Leofric, Earl of Mercia in the 11th century. It is worth noting, however, that Leofric is sometimes attributed a black, single-headed eagle instead. The wyvern, a dragon with two legs, has a dubious association with Mercia. Midland Railway, who used a silver wyvern as their crest, having inherited the symbol from the Leicester and Swannington Railway, asserted that the wyvern was the standard of the Kingdom of Mercia, and that it was a quartering in the town arms of Leicester. However, in 1897 the railway magazine noted that there appeared to be no foundation that wyvern was associated with the Kingdom of Mercia. A similar theme was later taken up by Bram Stoker in his 1911 novel The Lair of the White Worm, which was explicitly set in Mercia. The word worm, derived from Old English worm, originally referred to a dragon or serpent. Wyvern is derived from Old Saxon wyver, also meaning serpent. The ultimate source for the symbolism of white dragons in England would appear to be Geoffrey of Monmouth's fictional history of the kings of Britain, where an incident occurs in the life of Merlin in which a red dragon is seen fighting a white dragon which it overcomes. The red dragon was taken to represent the Welsh and their eventual victory over the Anglo-Saxon invaders, symbolized by the white dragon. However, there is no archaeological or artifactual evidence that the early Anglo-Saxons used a white dragon to represent themselves. The cap badge of the 2nd Mercian Battalion of the Territorial Army in the 1980s was a wyvern. It has been suggested that the Middle Kingdom and J.R.R. Tolkien's farmer Giles of Ham is based on Mercia, and indeed the story is dominated by a dragon. However, this dragon becomes the symbol of the Little Kingdom rather than the Middle Kingdom as a whole. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.